right. There we go. Okay, I think first and foremost, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that Governor Kelly has extended the um, stay at home order another two weeks, it's looking like. Uh, she said that they would reevaluate as we go, but I think it'll probably be another two weeks. And so with that and the impact it's going to have on libraries, I'm just curious what everybody's uh, strategy is right now for for your library. So where, what are you doing right now um, in your library just so that we kind of have a starting point here. So for instance, uh, I'll start with Melanie. Melanie, are you guys providing curbside service or anything like we, that or what are you doing? We stopped it after the initial home, stay at home order for, two, for, for a week and a half, two weeks. Last Saturday, last Saturday, I came in and started to pulled all our reserves, all of our holds and called people and said, if you can come now or Monday, I will do, we'll, we'll bag them up. So what we're doing is bagging them up and putting um, their name on it, on a bag and putting it outside and giving them a time, 9.30, 9.40, 9.50, 10 o'clock. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to talk to Alicia, and and I've been doing that. I haven't been asking the staff to come in. I've I've got staff working in and out all the time because they don't want to sit at home, and there's tons they can do. But um, so this morning I'm going to we're going to pull the reserves. I made an announcement yesterday and said curbside service will will begin. We'll call you and then we'll deliver it once a week on Friday. If we get more busy, we'll do it twice a week. I don't want to do it more than that because ha we have other things to do. I don't want to put my staff in, in um, you know, in jeopardy so that they have to do it. I will personally do it myself just so that they um, um, can stay home and do their thing. I'll have people help me when they're working, pull books, and then I'll put them out and stuff. Um, so I started that officially yesterday, and that's what we're going to do. I want to get a hold of Alicia and see about our elderly patrons and I'm going to call them personally and see what kind of things we can get either audiobooks or books for them because talking books doesn't work there's nobody doing anything and I have people coming up and knocking on the door asking please isn't there something that they can have I have people calling me at home asking so um, or if they know my email or text or whatever begging for help so we're going to start working with the elderly also and see what we can do Okay, very good. Well, if there's anything we just, can do at yeah. the system to help with that, let me know. Right. Just so you know, Melanie, I've been making cartridges for several of your people in Colby and sending okay. them directly to them. So. Okay, good. Well, we were yep. told we were totally out of business. Um, not me. Okay, <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> so I can make the cartridges for people. It's just that I am down on cartridges, so I'm trying right. to get people to send them back into me. I can't order them. Um, but yeah, any, I've got three or four patrons right now that I'm sending them to them every week and three of them are from Colby. So they I mean, are kind I'm, I'm going to deliver to some of them. I'll, I mean, Colby's not that bad. I'll get in my car, get the bag, deliver it yeah. like Meals on yeah. Wheels did. I found out what Meals on Wheels is doing. I mean, if Meals on Wheels can do it, if the senior center center can do it, if the, if the bottle gallery can sell their booze and everybody can go to Walmart, why can't right. we help right. people? So I'm, yeah. I'm I'm over this stay at home stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> all right, um, I'm just I gonna... was, George. Oh. I was just gonna say the reason we didn't do any services is because we didn't want to encourage people to, because they'll come out and get a book, mm -hmm. and we felt like that would be encouraging them not to stay home. So sure. we're sure. actually not offering any services right okay. now. Okay, okay, and and, and, and you I, get to do that. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, please don't think that um, if you're right. doing something that it's wrong, if another library is doing the opposite, do not feel that way. This right. is exactly. all down to local control and what you feel, okay? So please don't compare, contrast, anything like that. And so I what will Oakley's say doing is what needs to happen in Oakley. What Colby's doing needs to happen in Colby. You know, right. so don't, please don't compare yourselves. And yeah. I will say not all my staff agree with me, but that's why I'm not having them help me. Sure. Right, and, and that's kind I'm of the comfort them. level of the staff. Plus, yep. we did. Right. I, I did go to Norton yesterday and pick up the laptop. So we're going to go in and start doing inventory. Just steal yeah. no services, but do inventory. But um, 
I don't, I, I left it up to the staff if they even want to come in and feel comfortable doing that because I just, I just know people. I mean, it's like Melanie said, people are going to want a book and then they're going to come out and, you know, why encourage them to come out? I have a husband with a compromised immune system. Yeah. I don't want to encourage people to come out and get, and, and get exposed. So you, do you pay your staff then um, for, for like 40 hours? Do you go ahead and pay your staff? Have you been? Yeah, we're going to turn in a 40 hour work week just as we've been going in. We've all taken turns for this first three weeks. We, I went in the first week every day and did mail, did the book drop, we're sanitizing books, checking them in, doing email, doing the things that need to get done, paying bills, I ran reports. And then Trish did it all last week and it's Steve's turn this week. And then I told them starting next week, if they're comfortable, they're going to come in and we're going to start doing inventory. Yeah. yeah. Good, good. That's good. And that's, that's a very good question, Pat. And that's, that's actually on my list here. Once we kind of go through, I want to see how many people are, are still um, able to pay uh, their staff. So, um, so Pat, let's go to you. Okay. Um, real quick then. So what's, what's Norton Public doing? We are um, the three more full-time people. We are, we're working. We're coming in about um, 8.30, 10 o'clock, anywhere from 8.30 to 10 o'clock. We're not putting in a full, full day. We're, we're here. We've been moving stacks, moving books, cleaning, changing things around. Um, our part-timers, of course, aren't coming in at all. Uh, evening staff, weekend staff aren't coming at all, but they're not getting paid for it either. And I don't, I don't necessarily agree. We took the first two weeks off. Everybody full-time and part-time got paid their normal hours. And um, I was okay with that. And then um, several of the board members kind of made comments. Well, that's a big building and you could work um, independent of each other and stay away from each other and you have stuff to do and you could um, plan a new escape room and while you have this all this time, I don't think they realize, you know, we're still working. Um, and, but I have made the concession that if, um, you know, we only put in five hours that day, we're getting paid for the full day. Um, and too bad on them if they don't like it, I guess. But, um, that's kind of what we're doing. We've been taking Fridays off and, um, kind of, you know, playing it by ear. If the staff is not really comfortable, I'm not going to make them come in. Um, but my board has kind of set it up that if they don't come in, they're not going to get paid. They never really, I've had, I've really kind of struggled because um, we've been trying to do it through email, get the board approval through email, and I just, I can't get five, and I just, I struggled to get five, and it was like 11.30 at night, and it was Sunday night, and I'm like, okay, I'm just not doing it, and you know, I can't get them all really to answer me in a timely manner, so um, I'm just winging it, I guess. And we've, we've been doing the um, curbside service. We, we, I don't really have a great response to it. Um, maybe two or three a day is all. And, um, but that's okay. Those two or three will gladly help. And um, we've been bagging everything that comes in. We've been um, just putting it in a garbage bag and leaving it in the foyer for a week, bringing it in, disinfecting it, and setting it out and just letting it up there for days and days and then finally putting it back on the shelf. And we've been greeting people at the door with face masks and gloves and, you know, just trying to do what we can. But we've been, we've been kind of going out to their car and handing it through the window <laughs> type of thing. I, it's probably wrong, but um, I'm trying to keep the board happy and the people in the town happy. So yeah. I'm just kind of winging it, I guess. Okay. Well, Pat, I wanna, since you're the one who asked the question, I, yeah. I actually did. That was my decision to pay them. We're going yes. to turn that in, have a board meeting, and I may get some repercussions for that. I don't know, but I, just I know decided that that's what I was going to do because none of my board members have said anything. So, well, I know, we're non-essential, and so you know, I've I've just I've I've been torn back and forth. So I'm I split the difference. We took two weeks, and then we. Now we're kind of trying to work and we'll probably continue, but just, we're not going to hit it really hard. And we've, we've been distancing ourselves, you know, Emily's staying in her office. I'm staying in my office and Judy's out front. And as we are moving stuff, we kind of stay, stay away from each other, you know, and just do the best we can. But as far as the pay, I'm, I'm, 
I felt like that's how I wanted to do it. And I convinced him for two weeks, but I struggled to convince him, you know, to give us those two weeks, everybody with pay. And then it was little hints throwing out, well, you, it's a big building. You could stay away from me. Yeah, I guess we could, but the whole rest of the country is at home, you know, except for the, the hospitals and the grocery stores where my husband works. So I guess if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it through him anyway. So, um, but yeah, I, I struggled with whether to pay everybody. And so I was, that was my main question today. And what I was really curious about is how everybody else was doing it. So thanks. Well, I have to say too, that I kind of reasoned that, you know, I think it's going to hit us since we're tax supported, probably down the road. Yes. But we budgeted for right. these many hours for, for the entire staff. So to me, it's like, we might as well pay them. But right. we'll see how the board feels about that at the end of the month. <laughs> Good luck our, with that. Our board <laughs> has fully um, encouraged us to keep everybody on and said, they would rather keep the staff than even have to purchase things and do things. Um, so they've been really on board. My frustration is sometimes you have some staff who are at a level of participation at home or here at the library with than others. And there are some people that are driving me crazy where they're getting 40 hours and doing zip. That yeah. drives me crazy when I have yeah. other people who are, I like Judy's here going through her, her, her JEs and her B1s and twos and threes and organizing them and working on summer reading in hopes that we get something, you know, right. or someone else coming in and helping. So that's where I get frustrated if you want to know. Yeah, it um, is frustrating. Yeah. yeah. But on the other hand, I don't want to lose good staff. Right. So. Well, and, and I think, I think one thing that we give, we have to teach our boards and others is that we're different from business. Okay. Um, business, if they have employees, that's cutting into their profits, you know, things like that. Nonprofits and governmentals, um, you're not doing that. So if you save that money on staff, what are you going to do with that money? It's going to end up being carryover and it's just going to go forward. And what are you going to use that for anyway in the end? Where if you can keep staff on, you're paying them they're able to then contribute to the economy of your local community still, which is completely necessary in a situation like this, then you're also benefiting your community and your economy through this process. And so they've got to keep in mind, this is a lot different than a business. You know, you're not looking for profits. You're looking for a way to keep employees working, keep economy running, things like that. So. Yeah. And that's kind of how I figured it too. I do. We, we are working from home as much as we can too. Like Steve is doing story time and posting it. So we, we are putting it, we're not putting in 40 hours, but we are working as much as we can. Yeah. Some of yep. us are. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, part of it for me is the caution of June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to be if people are late in paying their property taxes? What are we going to do financially after that? And we'll just have to, uh, back up and punt and see at that point and not live in fear. That's right. Yeah, that's, see, that's what I was saying about, yeah, I, I, it's going to, it's going to hit us down the road, I think. It is. Yeah. And that's when we're going to have to tighten our belts and figure things out at that point. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry, Carrie, and I skipped over you. You were next in line and I, and I, I you disappeared and then you popped back in. So, well, I want to hear from Karen now. What, uh, what's going um, on with you? Well, at the beginning, we, um, we did the curbside surface and that, and then the last two weeks we have not done that. Um, I have two employees that are um, have compromising health issues. So I have been doing most of the um, collecting the books, cleaning them and getting them ready for them to put on the shelf. And next week we're going to start alternating days for those two employees. So they're not here on the same day. And, um, to start getting ready, repairing, putting our toys away, because I'm sure that's something in our family place library that we've already been told that we need to put those away. And I'm sure that's going to be for quite a while. So we need to start preparing for that and um, maybe looking at some ideas of when we are able to open, what it's going to look like. So, um, and my board is adamant that everyone gets paid part time. Our student, everyone is going to be paid because we budgeted for that. 
So um, that was their decision and um, they were just adamant about it. So everyone is getting paid whether they're working a few hours or not. So it's kind of where we're at. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, um, let's see, we'll move down the list. Um, Steve's next. Steve, do you have anything else to add to what Victoria's already said? Keep up the great story time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've, I've been enjoying them. <laughs> All right, um, let's go on to, I see Cindy Harold is next. Cindy, what, what's going on down at Sharon Springs? Good morning, everybody. Um, we are just about like everybody else. We started off with big plans uh, for curbside and deliveries and so forth. And then it's just kind of uh, uh, become less. Uh, I think just uh, Sharon will, can speak too, but that she's just uh, trying to figure it out from here, going in more uh, mm -hmm. now starting uh, this week. And, um, but she's been taking care of books and she can talk about that, but it, it's, it's as a board member, um, we did, we were able to have a meeting, uh, actually the day that we decided to close, uh, we brought our board together. So we decided on, um, salaries and, uh, encouraging everybody to work at home if possible. Um, and so we, uh, I, I take after George, I did do one, uh, mail ballot. And then we will probably have a Zoom uh, first part of April and maybe revisit, um, well, we'll just have to revisit things, I guess. I'll just yeah. put it that way as we move forward. But we, we were concerned with our employees also. As a board member, we don't want anybody to suffer through this. So um, we just have uh, everybody's part-time, but we still encourage everybody to get their hours in one way or another. Excellent. All right. Well, Sharon, since uh, we're with you, you have anything else to uh, to add to what uh, what Cindy said? Well, I don't know if it's picking up on the sound. Yeah, we hear you. Oh, okay. But um, I'm in a unique position because um, I do still have a child who is a student of a public school. So oh. I have, and he's special needs, so I do have to kind of... Uh, put him I guess priority in his schooling because that's kind of priority one so some of the things that uh, as far as library when I would like to be down here I don't always get to do so that's kind of priority and my board's been excellent about that I let them know that hey that's just got to be the way it is until at least school's out um, and then we have uh, various other people that uh, have family members that either have uh, unique situations as far as health and things that they may need to stay at home more more so than and that type of thing um, I probably do I'm probably like um, the one from Colby and that or Melanie um, in that since I just live three blocks away I'm probably am the one that gets the mail and uh, disinfects the books and things like that so we're working it out <laughs> <laughs> just wish we had an end date to all of this <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you and I think all of us right <laughs> absolutely we're going to hope for May 4th that's a start date that's what the yeah. courier all right. said right? we can Jen, go with that <laughs> Jen, Jen told us the courier said May 4th we are believing in them <laughs> awesome awesome that, I'll that go is, with that <laughs> that is a floating date too so it may change who knows no pessimism, not. only optimism. That's right. <laughs> right. We have a physician on our friends board, though, said the middle of like May 17th. Yeah. That sounds I, good, too. <laughs> I keep it's still too long for me. Oh, my gosh. I keep hearing it's going to be August, September before we're actually back to some sort of normalcy. Oh, I think normalcy, yes. But, anyway. I hear um, it's okay. Yeah, through June. Thank you, thank you. Okay, um, I have somebody here that's Galaxy Tab E. I don't know who that would be. Do they wanna? Oh, and they left. Okay, good. 
Um, that makes it easier for us then. Um, let's go down to uh, Jane. Jane someone Burton. in the meeting that was just eavesdropping oh, on us, George. I know. We're finding it quite fascinating, <laughs> the very library interesting news. Conversation I think we just having. got Zoom bombed. <laughs> I know, I exactly. I know. I just sent out that article to everyone on our Facebook page, so be careful. <laughs> right. And then it'll be on the news, in the news, our sources say. Yeah. That the That's what the libraries say. are going to do. Yeah. If everyone has pants on, we're good. <laughs> That's what I, I was guess. thinking, Mary. Yeah. At least we have clothes on. <laughs> All right. Did anybody like see SNL on Saturday night? What? I'm sorry. Did anybody see that on Saturday night? What? I'm sorry. Um, what was on it, Kama? Kama was saying something about SNL. What was on it? They had a funny skit about Zoom meetings oh. and people not knowing how to <laughs> use them. And one woman took her laptop into the bathroom because she could not. She did not know that. I saw that. And they're I like, saw that. Stop. I saw that and it was so funny. I it will try there. to find that link to upload. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to put that on Facebook, Mary. I will. I will. I'll hilarious. look for that one in particular. Yes, <laughs> is that a problem? My husband asked me, is Zoom really that bad? I said, no, thank goodness we know pretty much how to use it. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got a lot of experience with it. Um, yes. All right, Jane, would you like to give us an update on how things are going at the school there? Well, um, at this point, we're not checking anything out to students. I'm trying to get everything returned as best as possible. Oh boy, yeah. Yeah, and I'm keeping busy because just before spring break, the juniors had turned in all their research things, so I have a lot of filing to do. Okay. I have one aide that um, is single and she wants to come in and help. So we sometimes my my other aide has children, so I'm not expecting her to show up at all. And um, it's just trying to get things for the end of the school year. Actually, um, I have worked with the junior high English teacher. We're planning big things for Library Week. And we're hoping that the English students will participate online. Excellent. Is there anything you need material wise from us that we can help out with? At this point, no teachers have requested anything. So I don't think so. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Appreciate the update. And I do want to jump in and say that we do Please. have the story walk, the portable story walk holders. So I can definitely bring those out to your communities. I won't be around anybody. Hopefully I won't get stopped as I'm traveling, <laughs> but we can set up the story walk. We did one at the um, nursing home. I did that a couple of days ago. And then I think Jane, that the, the teachers have kind of caught on that we have the one yeah. every other week out at Prairie Dog State Park. So but yeah. I'm happy to come out to any other community as well. We've got, we actually ordered new ones, so we have extra. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you guys have your own too, but there are some of the communities that don't. So I just wanted to kind of jump in there. Yeah, the one at the Ambi home, they're really looking forward to. No, I, I saw another idea too, Mary, to go with that one at the Ambi home. Apparently, if you have dry erase markers that you give the residents, and they can play tic-tac-toe or things like that with people that might be doing the story walk. That right. way you can on the make windows. the interaction. Yeah. yeah, on the windows. I saw that. So I'm going to leave that up to Darlene. I'm not okay. going to kind of advocate right. people right. drawing on the windows. I, I didn't uh, want to be the cleaning on. staff that had to go do that. It'll so they'd be on. like, Mary, when are you coming out to wash those windows down? I'd be like, oh, I'm coming right out. That's right. I'd come out. I would do it, but I just didn't want to kind of overstep my bounds. <laughs> nope, I understand. I understand. Okay, uh, how about, uh, let's see, Linda Glaze. Linda, would you give us an update on how things are going at Decatur Schools? Okay. Yeah, um, things are pretty much closed down. They don't want us in the building, um, so I'm trying to figure out how to get library books back to. Uh, I've been trying to send out um, things for the kids to do, uh, books to read or good videos to look at, uh, people reading books, that kind of thing. So pretty much just working at home and trying to get things done. Okay, all right. 
I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> okay, let's see, Nicolette Cox. You know, I'm just staying at home mostly. I go in once a week to see if any books have been returned. They're, they are trickling into the grade school and to the high school very slowly. And I did send out notes right before the complete close down saying which children had which books. So their parents should be aware of what books need to be returned, but I haven't seen very many of them returned yet. And I really don't expect to until the end of the shutdown. Okay. So mostly I'm just being at home. All right. <laughs> Good. And I will be so glad to be able to go. Yeah, yeah. I agree. All right, Sandy. Morning, George. Uh, Colby Public Schools are, uh, uh, I guess, like uh, most, if not all, the other schools, doing uh, continuing online education. Uh, no classes are being conducted in the buildings. There's a caveat to that. I was over in the middle school yesterday, and uh, uh, we have clerks working in each each of the uh, uh, school libraries, but doing back work, uh, uh, reading the shelves, uh, doing inventory, doing book repairs, and processing new books if there's if there's any uh, uh, that have just been pending. And like like all libraries, we always have back work to do. Yeah. Yeah. They're discouraging us to come from coming into the building, but. Uh, um, you can't read shelves from homes. <laughs> you can't wrap books from homes and wash your carry out materials. So uh, we've made a compromise that here at the uh, Colby High School, uh, uh, the principal, the uh, uh, chemistry teacher who doesn't have internet service at home, uh, and I are, uh, are are in the building, but we're the only ones. We have a we have a guy who does annual. Uh, touch up painting, and I notice he's down the hall <laughs> today. <laughs> uh, I sent out um, uh, notices uh, yesterday through the uh, uh, the online teachers requesting that uh, uh, outstanding overdue books uh, be turned in. Gave them a, a list, uh, so that's. That kind of thing is is continuing, but uh, we're we're just struggling along. Okay. The seniors are a little antsy, wondering whether or not they're going to have any kind of a graduation. Uh, yeah. So uh, I've I've heard bantied around uh, uh, a July day, which doesn't sound at all realistic. But uh, we'll see how that goes. I think like everybody else, we're just waiting for the the other shoe to drop. And uh, this is the new normal, so we, we have to grow into it until until we get another new normal. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. We have Melanie. I don't know. I think she ducked out. Which she had a phone call or something. Um, Mary was commenting about uh, um, book walk. Um, I know the public library put up there. Uh, Book walk on the public library uh, uh, front sidewalk uh, distributed down, so it's encouraging people to come to the uh, uh, the library ground at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at least they can walk around the building. <laughs> <laughs> they can dream wave of going at you inside guys someday. as you're inside the building, I guess. <laughs> Judy, the uh, children's librarian, and uh, and Melanie were. Uh, I was thinking that maybe that would help people remember. Remember them. <laughs> and I tell you, the Facebook presence is amazing, though, because, you know, I look every day at all of the libraries, and that is probably if, if some of the people can't get into your building, that's probably the best thing that they could be working on for you is just 
plugging it with resources, anything cute they see, because then it keeps people remembering you at least. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, let's move on to Sarah. Hello. Um, we started out with the curbside service also. Um, once, well, once there was a case in Gove, uh, Sheridan County shut down pretty quickly after that because we have several people that work over there that we work closely with Gove County. Um, and so shortly after that, we shut down. So we stopped doing that mainly. Um, I was concerned most, a lot of the people who were using it were our older citizens, the at-risk citizens. Um, so we, we stopped doing that. Um, Right now, uh, I'm about the only one that comes in. Uh, most of the most of the week, I come in. I take a few hours off here and there to help all my kids. Um, so that, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> uh, I have a staff that is her immune is comp immune system is compromised. So um, we haven't even asked her to come in. Um, and my other staff me uh, member, she uh, she does a lot of our Facebook posts and everything like that. So she's been doing that. I don't have either one of them coming in. Um, I'm the only one that's been coming in um, to the building. Uh, as far as paying our staff, the board, we voted right away to go ahead and pay our staff, um, whether they're here or not. Uh, it, it's already in the budget. Um, like I said, we have one that's not comfortable at all even going out, let alone coming up here, um, touching books that people, other people have touched um, or brought in or anything like that. But um, so right now that's where we're at. We're just, I come in, answer phone, the phone, email, put up books, clean, organize, all of that good stuff. Very good. Put a bit of a hamper on your uh, remodel, I bet. I got it. Yeah, they didn't find that essential. Yeah, <laughs> or, I don't know. I should, yeah, the yeah, they don't. Um, hopefully, we'll get there. Yep. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, now I'll go to Judy, and I'm not sure which Judy this is. So, I, uh... oh, and doesn't look like Judy has a microphone. So. Ricky. So I guess we'll skip Judy then. All right, very good. Well, thank you everybody for giving us an update and a report. Um, so a big discussion uh, across the state is what we're gonna be doing about summer reading. And I know that's probably something that's on your minds too. Um, any, any ideas yet coming from the collective uh, group here of what's going on for summer reading this year? I see Pat shaking her head no. I know Judy's preparing for it, but is not as we get go down the get, go down the way is not fully on board whether we're going to be able to do it. But we started something called Beanstalk in January, and so we started an online summer learning for kids that didn't. We've always wanted to do something for kids that went on vacation, and so this was a way to get parents and family involved, and it's something that we started. And so we were going to do a small rollout for summer reading. Well, maybe our only rollout for sure. summer reading this year. You know, we just don't know at this point. Yeah. Just playing it by ear. Maybe we'll yeah. hand out books and bingo cards in the bag. Right. Sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah, we've had a lot of a lot of librarians have reached out to me, which is why I put it on our Facebook page. So if you have any, I mean, I think they're just struggling. Some of our smaller ones, they get they're like, "What is everybody else doing? What's the larger ones doing?" Yeah, I'm like, sure. Some of my board members would like us to do Zoom or live face yeah. Facebook feeds. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's a thing we can do. I don't know. I think it would be, I mean, I think you could definitely do the story times, but you know, I don't know how you count the participation or right. like for us, how we're going to, you know, use that data for the CSLP, which the CSLP wasn't a lot of help this year. anyway. <laughs> so it's just been one of those years. So yeah, it really has. Been like all crazy. So. 
I know Central Kansas Library System has uh, talked with their members and um, they're creating um, a Google form for people to record their um, reading. So it's kind of going to be kind of like an online um, reading log. Um, they're also doing a few other things and they're going to be offering prizes um, across the region for people that, that do well at reading. So, I mean, that's an option too, if you right. would be interested yeah. in us helping to leverage what we have to support mm -hmm. you guys, we can definitely yeah. do something like that. If, if yeah. um, And I can create better. something like that because I know you guys are just trying to do everything else that yeah. you can do. So if that helps, I'm happy to do the Google form as well so that they can just record online what they are doing because they're already reading. I mean, maybe That's we can right. consider this their summer. It's already started. I don't yep. know. <laughs> and if, if the schools are at all interested, we'd love to have you guys involved as well. Yeah. Um, please don't think that this is just a public library discussion because um, one way that we can get to the kids is uh, with your help. And if we could help coordinate something for your library, please let us know. We would love to help in any way we can. So get some kind of thoughts percolating in the brain there. Okay, well, good. Um, well, it sounds like we might have to have our own separate meeting just to discuss summer reading in the future. And uh, yep. we'll have to do that as a Zoom. How does everybody feel about that? That sounds great. Okay. Why don't we uh, work on that then, Mary? And okay, absolutely. And I think that can... the nice part is, is, you know, it is nice that it's fairy tales because <laughs> there, yeah. there are a lot of things online. I mean, I've tried to put some of those on our page too. Like, um, you know, it's kind of fun that all of these celebrities and things like that because sometimes, but you know, sometimes kids are like, they get tired of hearing from us. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, that's the librarian, but hey, you know, so-and-so is reading the book today. So, yeah. But I think that Steve has been wonderful. It's just about, you know, being consistent and doing it. So I think at this point, they're happy to see anybody's faces that they can see. So it's <laughs> probably a good thing. Yeah. Well, and that, that might be something we could do is have each, uh, each children's librarian do a story time. And yeah. then we could record it. They could do it live and then we record it, put it on the websites yeah. and... Yeah, and I had uploaded the video of the teachers who had done um, just like the song, oh, yeah. you know, like little parts of the song, because that, that came from Maine, where I used to live, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute, that's awesome. but it's just little things like that that can be encouraging, because I think the biggest thing is that isolation will lead to people who already suffer from anxiety or depression, and things like that. So if we can just do anything that's fun and they can see our faces, I think that's probably the best thing that we can do for the kids too, because unfortunately they're gonna be the byproduct of that if their parents, you know, are in that kind of circumstance too, where they are worried or fearful. So that's about the only thing we can do is be really encouraging, I think. So. Has anybody thought about maybe, because I know the social distancing, that's gonna go on. Yeah. yeah realistically for quite some time. And I was thinking since it's summer, it maybe do things outside where yeah. you could be a little yeah, bit we thought about that too. apart yeah. from people and still yeah. be able to do something. And yeah, yeah and like mm -hmm. if you've already planned programs, maybe you could do them outside. Obviously you would tell people they gotta sit. You know, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing yeah. that out. Yeah, no, yeah we talked about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Like do Jam and Randy outside and say spread yeah. out, spread out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I don't know. It don't might know. be across the whole yard, right, Pat? Yep. <laughs> hey, yeah. whatever works. We'll put a yeah, little disc. Right. You can put a little disc on the on the ground, so that's where you have to stand. So. Yes. Get your measuring tape out. Yes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Isn't it crazy? It is. We've also thought about maybe um, smaller groups if they limit the number of groups that you can have doing them maybe more of them in the day than we usually do oh, one sure. group or two groups but we could do maybe you know for a 30 minute period and hopefully they could get out and then another group could come if we if that's something that is going to be possible and we yeah. would be able to limit the number of the kids. very they would have to sign up but yeah. to make sure that you only have 10 or whatever but yeah. that is one of the thoughts. Yeah. Good. 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 
one of the things we won't know until it happens is whether they're going to want us to do face masks if we're still dealing with it we can't get face masks so we've ordered face masks but all those things will come into play whether we can have a group whether they're you know do you expect people to come with a face mask Right. and the children or the adults or whatever what are we what are the expectations for the future yeah yeah we won't know and those are things like the face mask melanie my mom is she is a wonderful sewer but we can't get elastic <laughs> right she, yeah she made like several hundred that we donated but now it's to the point where there's no elastic so right so <laughs> yeah i mean so i have a gal here that does the upholstery and she's she made she's making 30 masks and she's using oh, a quarter inch ribbon now she's running out of ribbon but if you have ribbon she's yeah. using quarter inch ribbon and then tying it back and tying it yeah. back in the back so um yeah. she's gonna make 30 for us three per you know yeah. i figure when we open we're gonna need to do something at mm -hmm. least to show that we need yeah. to speak a message of please do social distancing right. you know? well and again i i was at the post office before hopping on the zoom and um there's a gentleman in our town and he um was involved with um like he had a lot of things happen to him and i you might have heard of him scar man but he um, he had someone make the mask for him so that he could promote, you know what I mean? That, you know, he just gave them away. So that was just so wonderful to hear that too. So that was kind of, I mean, there's just lots of different things out there. So there might be groups that would be willing to donate. I think as a library, you just need to let people know that that's a need. So, and like I said, I'm, if we can get some elastic, my mom will be happy to make some too. <laughs> So I used uh, hair ties when I made yeah. mine. So yeah. and this gets a little snug on the ears. The hair ties. <laughs> with the button, button. With the button yeah. those are and yeah. I, they work fine. Yeah. So. The other thing I was thinking, is there a way we can get, just, uh, you know, hand sanitizer that goes near the doors as people walk in? Yeah. If we, I mean, I can't get masks right now on, on um, Amazon for the general public. I can't say here, put this on as you come around the library. There are none. Um, we don't have hand sanitizer anymore, very, very, very much. And we don't um, have, we have some gloves, but we're gonna be running out. By the time we open, we'll probably be running out of the resources we need to help. I think people some people are clean. making their own, the, the hand sanitizer, there's a recipe to make your own. So I know that people are doing that. Yeah. But soon the ingredients will be gone. I That's know. everybody will be making it. Yeah, it's just like yeah. bread. Like the yeast is gone, the flour is right. gone. <laughs> uh, my husband bread is a manager the for the grocery store and they, they can't get things. No. And no. and some and now the food trucks are being hijacked. And so oh he actually goodness. he actually wears a nine millimeter at four thirty in oh the morning when word. he unloads our truck because they're being oh. hijacked. Never would have thought of that. Yes. Oh my word. Yeah, they're being hijacked at the place of the distribution center as they're coming out. Oh my gosh, yes. that's scary. It is very, very. Yeah, didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did not even. Um, I yeah. saw something on TV and it's like South Dakota, like their meat packing plant is closing. Yeah. Um, so we might yeah. be short on meat yeah. soon. Uh, yeah. Right. Too, they were saying that it's going to be getting grocery stores because they had to shut down that major plant so it's getting scary you know we might be running low on food yeah. in a few months yeah yeah so. it's care it is scary well i hope uh, that's very scary for jeff i feel for you pat very much yes it is yeah. thank you a tip for mary um as she was talking about the um uh, difficulty finding elastic um i overheard a um recommendation from somebody. I haven't tried it yet, but um, um, some enterprising soul pointed out that bungee cords are uh, uh, made up of the, the center, center part once you peel away the, uh, the yeah. fabric outer wrapping. Um, it's just a whole bunch of strands of right. uh, individual strands of uh, elastic and uh, cut off the uh, uh, the outer uh, wrapping of, of a bungee cord. There's uh, just a whole bunch of uh, elastic available. I think as soon as they let any of that knowledge out, then people buy it the next day. <laughs> right. 
we keep trying to stay ahead of it. As soon as I heard a new idea, I'm like, oh, okay, mom, we can get this. And then it's like, oh, nope, those are all gone too, mom. <laughs> No. Well, Mary, the library, we do have a lot of yarn. I don't know if that, I know it isn't elastic, but we um, have yarn. Okay, yeah, I can see. My mom's tried a, a variety of different things, like Karen was saying, and then they, like some people are crocheting the um, little tabs for the back that have buttons on them, so that that's good. She doesn't crochet, so if we can get someone to crochet. Yes. and we. <laughs> or even if you just had the, the loop. You know, yes. even, it, it would be soft to yes, go around the absolutely. ears. Absolutely, oh. yeah. So but that's what they say. It's not comfortable to wear, according to my husband, all the nurses at the hospital are like, it's not comfortable to wear on your ears all day. And tying it doesn't necessarily stay in place. So it's kind of like, all right. They're trying to think outside the box. And I did, um, I think I put on our thing about the 3D printers. They were making yeah. little ones too that yeah. just went, you know, and had it so you could attach it. So. Yeah, we'll be very innovative once we can get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> right. Speaking of going back to work, so I had on the list reopening because there's a lot of discussion about what we're going to do when we reopen. Um, I have um, some procedures that Central Kansas Library System has put together, and I actually have begun doing research on what we need to do to uh, reopen our libraries. And I have a lot of information on that as well. And so I guess my question to you is, is one, do you want to have the system create some sort of document that we can send out to give suggestions? Um, would you like to have a separate meeting where we can come together and talk about all this? Um, what, how do we both. want to proceed with this? Or do you want both. to just develop your own and just ignore us completely? I mean, no, do both, George. Okay. Do both. Yeah. Oh. Melanie, you're, you're uh, muted. Uh, I said send it out ahead of time and then we can discuss how that would look. Okay. You know, that might be helpful. I so we're starting to make a list too, but I'd love to ha have some input. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll put something together and we'll, we'll get a Zoom scheduled for talking about it then. We could also in inundate George with suggestions. Please do. <laughs> I will take whatever you have. Yes. <laughs> Because the more I can compile and the more we can have to start with, the better off I think all of us will be. So. Yeah, there's just so many things that you're not going to be thinking about. You know, it's like there's so many little things that will have to be revamped of how we've previously done them. You know, even like talking about the books, I know that Victoria, you said that you were sanitizing them already. But that's, you know, that's a huge one right there. Like with us rotating books and all of that. So. Everything is going to, you know, it might be like, oh, yay, we can reopen, but it's going to all have to look so different. I think you should still... put a, I think you should put a stop to rotation for oh, yeah. quite a while. Yeah. 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 yeah some, some libraries depend on rotation. Right. So, yeah. and some of my patrons love rotation. Mm -hmm. They come the next, they come the day of or the next day to see rotation and we clean right. all of our books as they come in. So. Yep. If we're going to return them to you, we would return them clean. And yeah. I do that with the BPH because they're coming from the nursing homes and things. So I've always had that procedure to wipe them down with the Clorox wipes. So I've always done it. It doesn't damage anything. You just have to wipe it after with um, a dry one because you don't want that to stay like that. But yeah, I definitely have done that too. But you so. can't, it's getting to now you can't get Clorox wipes. No, I know, no, I know. We have, we have some in those large kits that nobody ever used. So that's what I started to go down <laughs> to the basement and get them out of the large kits. I'm like, George, we have some. <laughs> yep. We should have, we should have some in the janitorial thing yeah. too. I have some in my office and we have like two or yeah. three in the janitorial. Yeah. I use them to clean my HKs when they come back. Yeah. The Humanities of Kansas, of course, since people yep. hold on yeah. to them so long for a couple months. Yeah. So I usually, I wipe them down with the Clorox wipe when they come back. So I usually do that too. So yeah. one thing you could do, if it's not a book and it can have soap and water, use yeah. soap and water. But if yeah. it's something like a book or something, then use the Clor Clorox wipe or alcohol. We're using dried, drier um, Clorox wipes and using alcohol. So right. choose what you're using the Clorox wipes on. And well, I'm lucky for us, we have the Mylar. So that all of our books are covered with a Mylar, you know, except for the softback ones. So, I mean, we, 
do have that advantage that the soap and water would work on that because you're just you're talking about that sheeting that can just be wiped off. It's just more time consuming, so that's the only difference. That's true. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking about magazines. Um, I'm thinking they will just have to go away, won't they, in newspapers? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I was looking for the the life of coronavirus on different surfaces, and there's a there's a WebMD article on that. Um, the CDC doesn't support it yet because there aren't enough studies that have been done to uh, determine approximately how long uh, it lasts. Um, but the uh, the WebMD said that Harvard and somebody else, Stanford, did a study. And they say it's about five days on paper. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that would be tricky. Somebody touches it, and then you set it on the table, and somebody else comes in to read, and they touch it, and they've sneezed on it. Yeah. You know, that COVID can be on there for, you know, up to yeah. five days. That would be the same for books, so we might as well close our doors and get rid of all our books. It would be. And so I think that's where um, you probably wouldn't have – uh, the newspapers out or the magazines necessarily for public use and if somebody did use it you'd have to almost put it into kind of a quarantine um, mm -hmm. kind of like what some libraries are doing now where you quarantine the books for five days and then get them out disinfect the covers and then put isn't them back there, in circulation we've been, isn't there a place though where you say use it your own risk you somebody else may have somebody else has read this if you want to read the newspaper that's your choice and leave it out for them and leave a sign you could it might have covid Yep, that's. I mean, again. at some point, there are people in my library who come every day to read that li that, yep. that yeah. newspaper, and they're dying without it. Yep, yep. I'm I'm just I'm just throwing out recommendations, uh, you know, and and thoughts. So information you guys can do, you know. They may be please. they may be dying to read it, but they're going to die if they read it. So they better get an online online subscription going. Well, and we do have access to that with all of the, I mean, that is the one thing is that all of that has been opened up so much. There, there really can't be anyone that doesn't have, you know, access to books because all of these publishers have released, you know, all of it. So all of the audibles and everything that they have stepped up. So that's the one great part that there really shouldn't be any, like I said, we just have to keep plugging to people who didn't, you know, previously use those services, that they are there, and you do, you can do it. You can do it on your phone. You can do it. You know? Maybe so, then, if we get to where we can use computers, we can set them up with a computer and a screen where they can yeah. use the, the newspaper yeah. and the magazines online again, Absolutely. instead of providing the paper resource. Well, right, and that. where some idea. of yeah. right, and where some of the money can go to is towards those subscriptions, those newspaper subscriptions, because you can, like even our Norton Telegram, you can get that online. It's just that there's a, a, a charge for that. So maybe as the libraries and the system, we can help to cover that, you know what I yep. mean? So that's one of those things, too. Yeah, get you an online subscription that you can, mm -hmm. yep, absolutely. That's a great idea. Yep. I, we just got to think outside the box, them. you know. We've, we've been in our box for a while. We need to think outside. <laughs> hey, it seems nice to see everybody. It's like, oh, there's everybody. I know, I know. I'm so happy to see everybody. I know. Great. Okay, um, the last two items I think we've kind of alluded to already um, that I wanted to talk about at least is budgets for 2021. Um, I, I don't know where a lot of people are, are going uh, with their budgets for 2021, what they're thinking. Um, but I think uh, Victoria made a very good point early on in our, our session here today that, um, you know, just keep in mind that, uh, that in the future we might see reductions because of, of delinquent taxes or unpaid taxes and things like that. And so I would just uh, encourage all of you to definitely take a look at your budget and see if there are some places you can cut um, because we may be seeing that in the future. Um, and just to prepare yourself for that inevitability. So. Anyway, that was the only comment I had. If you need any help um, going through your budget or looking at it, let me know, and I'll, you know, I'll give you a hand in any way I can. So. Um, and the other thing is planning for the future. Um, do you think that this whole thing will change the way we serve our patrons in the future? Absolutely. Absolutely. In every facet. 
and every like um karen i didn't even think about the toy situation mm -hmm. you know we just revamped our children's and moved a bunch of stuff around and got it looking cute and, and you said that and i was like crap we're gonna have to pull mm -hmm. all that i didn't even think about it didn't mm -hmm. think about it once mm -hmm. so so what i want george is i want um a hallway outside my library where people can come in, open the door, close the little the little glassed in area, and then speak to Lenexa and say, go to Google, get my email, um, let me read it on the screen, on the wall, so they don't have to touch anything and we can go <laughs> and clean it up after them and then they can leave. That's awesome. That's right. well, there you go. All well, right. I mean I have a dream for the library. <laughs> All right. Just and need Karen was talking about the family place libraries and they've always had in place what's called the yucky bucket, but now it's going to be yucky bucket for everybody and not just the children. <laughs> Library yucky bucket. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, they do have uh, what Alexa powered uh, TVs now. And so. Well, and I think the positive thing, if you look at it too, like Pat was saying that can come out of this is that influenza all of the different strains of influenza have killed a lot of people as well so maybe all of the procedures that yeah. we put into place this distancing all of that we've had people who've been immune compromised from that and die every year as well so maybe it's finally a wake up that we do things differently so that we do protect our entire society so yeah, sometimes it's point. kind of like you don't know what could come out of it but maybe that's the good thing that could come out is that we're yeah. kind of aware of that and not so like, you know, lackadaisical about it. Like, oh, well, we all get the flu, but people die yeah. of that every year too. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I figured for those of us who like our personal space, you can all stay six feet away from me <laughs> long after we're no longer <laughs> I know, no one passes that bubble anymore. <laughs> okay. Back up. <laughs> yeah, and I figure I'm just gonna start working from home all the time. <laughs> really? That'd be awesome. I have right. one supply question. Yes. Uh, Down on accident. <laughs> as my uh, volunteer uh, status at Sharon Springs Public, I've been <clears throat> covering books with the, the Mylar. Oh. And we are about out. Do, is Alice still ordering from Demco, or do we should we do that on our own? Uh, we are. Yes. Um, okay. The hardest part is trying to figure out how to get it to you. Um, okay. At this point, we can drop it in the mail to you, and it'll get there. Um, because we don't have courier and um, we won't have uh, rotation. So we'll just drop in the mail to you. So yeah, please do put in any orders that you uh, you might need. The books are my big thing. I'm not sure how to do books because I have some libraries that want to start ordering books again. And that can get expensive if you take those to the, uh, to the post office. Um, so that's one thing I'm still thinking about and trying to figure out how we're going to do that. Well, maybe they have to come see. visit you in Norton, right. stay in their vehicle, <laughs> drive to Norton, have a lovely trip, pick up the books, put them in their car, come back to their library, mm -hmm. and they'll never even touch you or see you. Yeah. I think put we could deliver them. You know. I, I, could. See, I'm thinking what Mary's saying. I think we yeah. might just deliver them and we'll drop right. them on your curb and then we'll yeah. run. Well, that's good too. Yeah. I mean, it's no different than UPS. We're going to have to be creative. So. Yep. <laughs> We can wave at you gonna, through the window too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wait, wait. Or I, you know, we might see if we could just get them shipped directly from Ingram to yeah. the place. You know, I, there's some uh, options. I just, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out what's going to be the most uh, cost effective. So. Yeah, and I think they'll be a lot more flexible at this time, and that's all we have to do is say that to Ingram because they want our business still too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. one of those things where if we say to them, "This is something that could help us out," and we want, you know, to place orders but we haven't at, up till this point. So yeah, that might be something good too. Yep, yeah. absolutely. I was just thinking of all those wonderful, all of us wonderful people who are ready to go take a, a small little venture out of our house and yeah. breathe. And breathe for a minute <laughs> and drive. Yeah. Yep. That's the reason I went to Norton yesterday to get the laptops, just to get, a, just to get, get out. <laughs> absolutely. And Dave put them in the back of the hatch and we talked, I say, stayed in my driver's seat and we talked back and forth for a little bit and yeah, and then I left and it was nice. It was a nice little drive, but it was a nice day too. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little well, chillier out there today. Great <laughs> options, I guess. So. All right.
All right, anybody else have any other thoughts that they'd like to share at this point? Was this helpful, just getting together and chatting? Yeah. And... Mm -hmm. Very much. It's nice seeing yes. everybody, seeing people. Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. I agree. And for those of you that don't know, we will be losing Kama, so maybe this is at least yeah. an opportunity that we can say that we are so thankful right. Thank for you. everything that Thank you've you, done Kama. for us, Kama, and we're going to miss you a lot. And okay. we can't even throw oh. a party for her, so. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thank you, Kama. Thank you. Thank you, Kama. Thank you, Kama. She's I, agreed I to come back so we can throw a party for her. I know. Yes, we oh, will yeah. do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm coming back. So yeah, I, I already miss my my colleagues, my you know my friends, my family at work. So we didn't get to see each other last last month that yeah. I've been here. So yeah. yes, I'll be coming back. So what's your plans? <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to be a Head Start teacher out in Colorado and um, Lakewood, Colorado. So I actually got the job and everything. Um, with all this coronavirus, though, it pushed back my higher date. And um, but actually, I am going to start actually next week. And I'm working from home. Um, unfortunately, being a, a teacher from home, it's it's very unusual. But that's what they're going to have me do. So so yeah. So that's I'm I'm very excited. I get to be a preschool teacher and work with kids again. So and that's it, awesome. Yeah, very, Best very of excited. luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Although I'm really going to miss everybody. I loved my job at Northwest. And, you know, like I said, you know, everybody I worked with was my family and all my librarians. You know, I, I had such a good, good rapport with all you guys, too. And I'm going to miss you all terribly. So, yeah. So thank you guys. I'm going to miss you. That, you know, <laughs> yes. do, so I'm going to miss awful. you all, too. We're going to miss Zy Bear. Yes, the invite every day. <laughs> oh, I know. So We're going to miss the whole family. All been fun. He's coming in to see you guys. Oh, he better. I know. He misses Miss Emily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, yeah. We'll have to come see you guys, too, on Miss Rosalie. So. Oh, yes. She's been out since this whole thing started. She's not coming. She's not getting out of oh, her I house. Bet, so. Yeah. Yeah, she needs to stay home. No, no. Yeah. Good. Good. She needs to stay home. Everybody needs to stay safe and everything in this, so you never know, so. Right. I'm glad that you guys are able to go into work and get some things done, though, too. So, you know, I bet this yeah. is hard on everybody, the librarians, and so, yes. Yeah. You guys, seems like you guys are doing all very, very well, though, all you librarians, so. For the uh, public librarians, um, I forgot to mention this. Um, we have a budget workshop online for all public librarians if they're interested. Laura Dubon's going to be doing it. Um, it's April 29th and May 13th at 11 o'clock a.m. And she's going to talk about a lot of these uncertainties. And we're trying to also find out because one thing that's always been a mystery to all of us is um, how they determine, um, let's see, determine the different um, kinds of uh, valuations. Uh, it's never been something that they've shared with us. I know it's their magic formulas that they have. And so we're supposedly having a meeting with somebody from uh, the Kansas Valuations uh, Committee and they're going to be sharing that information with us. So she's gonna kind of go through that information as well as any budget information and changes and things like that for um, next year, and so she was hoping that she'd get a lot of people to to join, and just um, share some concerns that people have, and and then and then try and hopefully come up with some answers for everybody. So that might be another good option for all of you as well. I'll send that out in an email so that everybody has that. Um, and uh, we were going to do it for Apple, but because Apple was canceled this year, um, she's just going to do it for everybody. Another thing we might ask her to do as we talk about budget is that she makes sure she addresses if if we all have to republish our budget how do we do that what are the requirements as okay. library directors and things to me i keep thinking okay i know i know there's a way to do it but and our city could help us but it's always helpful to have somebody who does this work in in a system teaches that i can definitely have her talk about that Okay, thank you very much everybody for being here and 
please send your reopening ideas to me and I'll get those all compiled. And if you need anything else, please let us know. It's good to see all of you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. God bless you all. Bye-bye.